This is my junkyard motor with my motor, my transmission, and my final drive. Today, I'm going to take off that final drive, and I'm assuming it's going to be a stock 307. Uh, if it's not, and if somebody had put in a 355 or a 370, that's going to be like a miracle, and it's going to be amazing, but I don't think so. But we're going to take it off and find out first. And if it's not, then we're going to order a 370 ring and pinion, and then we're going to build uh, a 370 final drive. And I'm going to leave it open. I don't care about the limited slip. I'm not doing that much gravel driving. Um, so it'll be a cheaper alternative than buying the whole unit um, completely done. So anyway, let's get this off of here and uh, see what we got. Okay, so here's a notch here. Watch that. Uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, and then 07. So that is the factory final drive. So that means we'll be taking this and cleaning it. And I will now order my ring and pinion to change this into our 370, which is going to just be really the final icing on the cake, I think, for drivability. The motor is running great with the new intake on it. So, uh, okay, so anyway, we've got it done. One thing I wanna note is that there's one, when you're taking these bolts out, there's one, uh, I, don't know, I guess that's a stud in there, but anyway, this is a pain to get to, but there's a, a nut on this side. So then when you remount it, um, you'll be able to use that to sort of line things up. There's a nice speedometer gear and that's what the end of the transmission looks like. Okay, here is my donor uh, final drive. I'm going to end up using the cover. I could order one of those fancy aluminum covers for this, but uh, for now I'll end up using the cover and the other final drive. When I swap it out, I'll get this all put together and then do the final, put the final gasket on and all that under the coach. So now I'm gonna pressure wash it real quick. Okay, it's open now. And I'm gonna tilt it forward and drain out the fluid. Um, although, it might have already been drained. It doesn't appear that there's much of anything in there. So who knows what's going on with that? Um, interestingly, this does not have the gasket unless the passage is in the back of the gasket. There is a the little breather hole. we'll have a vent hole for that so we'll see if our new ones have that and I did notice this there's a little bit of slop in here so the new bearings that I ordered hopefully we'll take care of that get it get our stuff in <clears throat> get it to my friend's shop and he's gonna help us go through how to rebuild this thing he's never done one of these he did work for Oldsmobile years ago he was very curious about it he's built hundreds of rears before so we'll see what he thinks about this one okay so we've got and here our ring gear and the whole uh, pinion and our bearings 
from applied. So let's go take this. Let's go see if we can rebuild this final drive. See what it's all about. Side. Hold on. Yep. And that side, one dot. One dot. And then we put two dots here and two dots two here. Two dots there. So we, we know that these basically are going to come off and go back in the same they place. They have to go to the same side you took them off. Okay. So we took this uh, 9 16 bolt out. This just slides right out of there. So down, let me see this light here. I can't put my finger on it, but there's a big here. Put a screwdriver down in there. Right. That nub there. Right there. So even if you get this loose. Which we have it loose. Which we have it loose. It that thing's not coming out and hits that. Right. So the theory then being. Okay, the problem is this will not slide out once the caps are off because it catches up inside there on the ring gear. So what you have to do is you have a spacer and you have a shim. You have to finagle this little shim out. The spacer will not come out because it catches the top of the bearing. So you have to slide the shim out at the top here and you have the exact same setup on the other one and you slide once you get this top shim out it gives you enough wiggle room you get the bottom shim out and we're going to show you how this works once we get go ahead and grab that so you slide that shim out now you've done that you can you have enough wiggle it up show how it goes up and down so now you can move that thing up and down. It gives you enough play to get the big shim out, which is what they call a spacer. And we have mic these. Those spacers are identical left and right. Your shims are not. So now you get the top one out and you can pick up on it and slide the bottom one out. And once you've done that, you have to because your ring gear show how it goes back and forth without coming out. So it won't come out because it hits where the pinion is. So now you have that much play, you can finagle it sideways and that's how you get it out. And this right here is what goes up inside the ring gear which stops that from coming straight out. So that's why you have to get all your shims out angle it down and take it out and if you notice we did this without a case separator you can do it without okay so now you can just see this is a little boiler hole that you got to get your pick into to pull out these shims and basically there's your spacer that's hitting that so that'll never slide out but the shim will slide you, you just need to use your pick to get enough out to where you can grab it and pull it so that's what's happening there two spacers and two shims are what's in this unit one's a little thicker than the other you can actually even see it with your own eyeballs so now we've started you can see with a punch we're tapping this plate out from the inside. We've got a little gap there and we're gonna pull this out and see what's up with that. Okay, the ring gear comes off, just tapping around the edges with a hammer and a large punch so you're not making little holes in this thing. But it, uh, a couple of good whacks as we spin it and that comes off no problem, so that's that. All right, so we're gonna finish knocking this thing out. that I see zero shims in here so there's your pinion, the, there's your pinion. maybe there's zero shim there's a well let's take this apart and see what's what oh, I don't see any 
Anything in there? Nope. All right, so it looks like there's no shims in here, and it may be that the pinion just sits where it sits. Well, you got it. I don't we'll, know we'll where see. it sits. Okay, so in here, there's this little thing here that maybe is for prevent some sort of uh, foaming or no cavitation of the oil because that's an oiling hole. But until I hear differently, we're going to put that back in there. There's the O-ring for that that goes around there. And then there's an O-ring that goes around here that we'll just reuse because it seems like it's in good enough shape. And we'll get the rest of the gasket off. This hole gives you just enough clearance to knock out the race, the front race. Okay, so this here goes into that there, which then in turn comes out there. There's a little hole. Hold on. Let's see here. There's that hole, which then there's two seals that go in here opposite of one another, and it goes in between the two seals. So I guess the point is, is that if, if uh, differential fluid goes this way or transmission fluid goes this way they go out of here and drain out of there and don't mix that's the best we can figure what that setup's for just we know how to do this getting bearings off we're also cleaning stuff in parts washer i can't really film while i'm cleaning but this is another part of the process cleaning in parts washer okay we got our case cleaned off. We're, we're, we've uh, parts washed everything. And here's our carrier. That's all clean. There's the number on it. I'm not going to get super intense on these gears in here. I know they're a little dirty, but I'm not taking that apart. That's fine. So, so that's that. Now we gotta get the bearings off of the pinion gear. And the reason is because I need that spacer there and that spacer there. Okay, so there's no shim on this side. So this side of your pinion gear does not need to come off unless you can see a shim, but you can see on the back of here there's the number, so there's nothing stuck to that, and there's nothing stuck to that machine surface. So you only have a front shim, and that's all that needs to come off. So you can reuse this front shim, which by the way, it's kind of loose, but I guess you line it up with your bearing when you tap it on. So that's how they're doing that. And so the preload is only controlled by this front shim, and then this shim sits in the back of here. So hopefully, when they design the pinion gear, they are smart enough to set it up so that it's gonna go back in there the way this one came out using these ex existing shims. The only thing we'll need to shim then for lash is gonna be our carrier, and then we're gonna find out. Because once you put that shim in there, I mean, you gotta press the bearing on here on the new one and on here. So it's not like you can keep taking this in and out and adjusting it. So. We're gonna go with how we found it. Cross our fingers. Okay, let's put this race in the case. Okay, so for the pinion bearing the backside, we still have our shim, which is right there. So we've got that shim there, and we've got this shim here on the front of this, and that's what basically sets our preload. And there's really only doing it once, so we're just gonna go with what was in there. Okay, I'm making a potentially sacrificial bearing. Um, I put the shim in the front there. I've been told not to put the shim in the front and get these back shims, but you can't find these back shims. So I want to put this thing together and look at my pattern and then see how far off it is. And then maybe I can somehow measure that and figure out 
what I need because I might have to actually have the thing made. So let's, let's put it back together the way it came out and then when we get to our pattern, we're gonna see what it looks like. I guess I, I'm using the old races. This is spinning, this is spinning as I'm cranking down and shoving this bearing on here, but I'm just making sure that Okay, we put our O-ring here and our little cleanup doohickey right there, or whatever that thing is. When we put this cover on, we need to make sure that hole there lines up with that there. And that hole there comes out here and goes in between our two seals. Uh, and this prevents anything that gets by the seal from mixing. Either gear oil or transmission fluid. We don't want them in the transmission or the differential where they don't belong. All right, we're hitting right there. So I'm going to take this down just a hair, I believe. I've seen somewhere somebody mentioned something about that, but that needs to come down just a hair right there. All right, we're gonna try this again. I have to keep taking material off here so the gear can get around that. And there's plenty of material to take off, but probably taking off maybe close to an eighth of an inch. It is recommended that you do this process before you put your pinion in there because we had to stuff towels in here and vacuum this out really good. And anyway, let's see if it goes in. This will be the third attempt. All right, I'm gonna take everything off up to the bevel. We've got from bevel to there that's still holding it in there. That's plenty. We'll take that all off and then it should go in. The third time, it's closer, but still no cigar. So we're gonna get aggressive here. Okay, that literally dropped in there, no problem. It's th that bevel that I showed you in there. You just go to the bevel, do it before you put your pinion in, before you do your final cleaning and this thing will drop right back in. All right, so at this point we have no shim on this side, and we've got the thicker of the two existing shims on that side, and that was tapped in with some force, putting some preload. And the, the feel test feels about right, so we're gonna put these caps on and check the skill. There's your backlash. Whoop. Yeah, it moves the pigeon. Yeah, it move, but that's, I think you're, you're, you're there. This stuff's been up there for a while. All right, so our back glass is down now. We're using the actual GM <laughs> gear making compound. You could use regular grease. That's all this is, is yellow yeah. grease. It just so helps pretty. you see it because it's yellow. Yes. You just paint both sides with some teeth. You can run it back and forth and see what and lines you, up. You put, a, you put a load. That looks pretty good too. So I think we're looking good. And then we're gonna look at this. Yeah, okay, all home and next step is to install it, put our new aluminum cover on there. So again, the pinion, I put it in the way it came out. I used these same existing shims. Um, I removed the one shim from this side and put the larger of the two shims, excuse me, the smaller of the two shims on that side. And everything ended up setting up perfectly. Now, I'm using the original open rear and maybe with the posi, um, it's a little trickier, but with this setup, the, um, the pattern was just uh, right where it needs to be. And uh, the backlash is right where it needs to be, so maybe I just got lucky. But uh, there we go. So the uh, uh, the review of its performance uh, will be the next one. I want to thank uh, Larry and Chip and Brandon from Knollwood Automotive in Dayton, Maryland, for helping me get this first one together. Um, if this one lasts for a while and looks like it's working good. I'll take my other one and build another one of these and maybe that'll be for sale. 
know, that we can do a core exchange kind of deal. Um, I'd like to do it again and see if it works out exactly the same. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.